What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Elevator Life. Hey, guys. How you doing? I hope you're having a good week. It's actually, it's just starting over here. Monday. Good time. Monday morning. Had a good weekend. Almost all the plans went according to how they should have, but uh, don't know if you guys are big boxing fans, but Mayweather Guerrero, great fight. Had a big event planned for it, but uh, I actually had a pretty rough night before, so I wasn't able to make it to the fight. But Tim was there with all our friends, and I hear it was a good time. Yeah, yeah, you uh, you don't get to see Mayweather fight very often, uh, and he was getting up there, so it was cool to wake up Sunday morning, 10 a.m., go down, uh, check out the fight at the bar. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this guy lives for fighting, lives for fighting. It's like me missing the NBA playoffs, game seven of the NBA playoffs. Made all this whole plan up, it was his idea, and he didn't show up, so. It was it was a rough night, had some clients Saturday night, had a little bit of fun, and um, what can I say, I, I needed some rest, but I was able to watch it online was nice, but only the last three rounds. Regardless, got to see Mayweather win, 44-0, good for him. All right, guys, today we get to talk about something awesome. It's vacation time around here, um, and we did get a question. A guy was asking about places to go, hidden spots, um, what do we recommend doing here in China, and China is a huge place, and a lot of people don't realize what you can actually go do here. Yeah, I mean, in regards to land maps, <coughs> it's number four right behind the United States, uh, that includes Alaska, which, what, 90% of that nobody really even goes to. But there's so many different terrains, things to see, and again, it's just a huge space where people can come travel and visit outside where poor people normally go, and a lot of people have no idea really what even exists here. Exactly. Um, one thing that this guy loves to talk about is ev everyone, when you think China, when you think your main cities, Guangzhou, Shanghai, Shenzhen, you're just thinking these huge metropolises. Well, everyone lives in the cities, yes, but what, something, something that's weird that happens over here is outside the city, you don't have to drive very far until you are outside the city limits, um, and the whole scenery has changed. Yeah, we, I mean, we always talk about taking those little breaks, the little mental vacations, maybe for a few minutes, maybe for an hour or two, but when you can really get a day to dedicate to it, 30 minutes to an hour outside of those major cities he just named, there's a completely different area, there's a completely different feel, terrain. Um, I mean, an hour outside of Guangzhou, one of our clients is in Logong, which is just a district in Guangdong, but, you know, blue skies, birds chirping, quiet, not skyscrapers, taxis, and pollution, you know, and that's an hour away outside the city, and I really like this because where I'm from in Oregon, um, you can do the same 30 minutes to an hour away, you're at a beach, you're in like somewhere, that's very green friendly, and that's something you don't get a lot here in these big cities in China. So it's really nice to be able to do those little escapes. And this is true for nearly every major city in China. Yeah, true. And it's really surreal almost when you're getting outside of the city for a, for a day or so. Because when you're living in a place like Guangzhou, when you're living in a tier one city, it's and, and you're a foreigner, life is wild, to say the least. <laughs> um, you know, you do live with anxiety, especially when you're just getting over here that you come to accept like life in China as life in the city, and that's what it is. Yeah. Um, you just really judge it for that until you get out and you see really, when you're out in the hills, when you're out in the Green Mountains, you know, in China, it does look and it can be almost eerily similar to what living in the Northwest looks like. Yeah. Right. I've had some moments where you're, you're sitting in a car and you're driving through the hills and you could not be in China. Yeah, 100%. You could be anywhere in the world. It's unbelievable. And a lot of people do not realize that, that China, with all its ancient, ancient history, it's so huge that it does have a lot of beautiful spots. It's got a lot of things to see. It's got a lot of places to go. And a lot of people don't realize that. Yeah, and in regards to like culture, cultural sites, uh, scenic sites, all those are really just, uh, they're so easy to get around here. Whether there's a, there's so many people that the, the transportation, buses, taxis, metros, or what have you, uh, if you're looking for one of those short vacations, it's really very feasible to escape for that one day or two and kind of just yeah recharge, refuel, and then you get right back at it. And as we said, that increases productivity so much. We highly suggest doing it, uh, you know, as as frequently as you can when you need it. So if you're living in Shenzhen, if that's a place you're considering going, Shenzhen has some beaches. Yeah, yeah, Shenzhen has some great beaches. Uh, we're not talking Honolulu or, or Boracay, but... Better. <laughs> yeah. I don't know about better, <laughs> but uh, but some of those beaches are very, very... Uh, they're pleasant. They're nice. They're what you expect. White sand, blue water, blue skies with some clouds, 
and it's nice. And again, that's, you know, maybe an hour and a half, two hours out of the city. I'm not talking the, the big famous ones that all the Chinese people go to, but you go up the coastline, the less people that are there, and, you know, you get some pleasant scenery. You're talking those pictures where everybody's laying in the water and everybody's touching each other yeah. for as far as I can see. You, not those it's gorgeous. Beaches. Yeah, about... You'd be surprised an hour up the coastline, a lot less people, um, so you can do beach bungalows, barbecue restaurants, whatever. It's just a good way to escape. And I mean, in Guangzhou, we go to Logong, or Logong, where our client j Bell is. Yeah, yeah, and that's just a little bit outside the city. In Shanghai, if you're living up in Shanghai, which a lot of people are, um, there's a few spots you can go up, uh, up there. Yep, we've been to uh, Hangzhou, which is now only a 45-minute boat train out of there. Very famous in uh, in Chinese history for a place called Westlake. And also, uh, I think it was Marco Polo who said it's like the... It's like the pearl of the Orient, just very water-oriented, very clean, very nature-friendly. And again, 45 minutes out of town, it's, it's not that much, it's just actually committing to it. That's the hard thing. Yeah. All right, so those uh, some little escapes if you're, if you're an entrepreneur living in the cities. But if you're coming over here to travel, if you want to see something amazing, there's definitely some spots here in China that you must see at some point in your life. Uh, and we're not talking about the Great Wall, the Terracotta Warriors, those those. Place, the Forbidden City in Beijing, those places are fantastic. I had a great time checking them Incredible. out. Incredible. Great time checking them out. But there's, you know, some even better places that you can see that are just mind-blowing. Yeah, I really think if you think of Chinese history and culture and how long it's been here and everything associated with just such an ongoing society that they've developed some incredible places here, for mm -hmm. sure. Um, one of our favorites actually is... What did you say, Longsheng and Yangshuo? Yeah, let's go. Th we'll, we'll go through the list right now. Longsheng, Guangzhou. Yeah, Long, uh, Guangzhou, Yangshuo. Yeah, <laughs> Longsheng, in Guangxi province. In Guangxi, Guangxi province, province yeah. southern China. Yeah, so neighboring province to us. Overnight bus ride or overnight train right away. But some of the biggest rice paddy fields in the world, those that are like la um, vertically stacked, yeah. just mind blowing to see. And then the picturesque. The, cars. the best way to make farming difficult. Yeah. <laughs> and they let you walk around in them and do whatever you want. And it's just, I, I mean, how would you describe it? It's picturesque? unbelievable. You, yeah. you spend a, like an hour or two climbing these stone steps up into the mountains where there are the rice paddies mm -hmm. and the farmers live there and you stay up in the rice paddies in like your apartment, your hotel, whatever you call it is like where the where the family stays and in the morning they the restaurant it's not really the restaurant they cook yeah. and so there is a restaurant or there is a menu that you can order from but you're eating uh you're eating what the family cooks and it's amazing because outside all the wind the log like i don't know if it was log but it's a wood cabin yeah, yeah, wood cabin. is these huge huge rice mountains yeah it's, it's unbelievable great, it's something that it exists in, I think, the Philippines and Indonesia as well, a few other Asian countries, but here it's just one of the, people don't even pay attention to it when they're coming to China, and that's, it's just a shame because it's one of the most, you know, breathtaking things I've ever seen. Spend the day hiking around, um, it's really amazing, yeah. it's amazing. And then to the south, so the, you normally go into a city called Guilin, which a lot of people know. Guilin's famous. Yeah, very, very famous, but also very developed. So right, Longsheng's to the north, and then Yangshuo's to the south. And there you get those karst mountains, the river, the people pushing the boats with a stick, biking and hiking to, I don't know, it's an outdoor paradise. Yeah, Yangshuo is gorgeous. You have to go there if you're coming to China. It, uh, it was actually where Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Edition did, <laughs> did their China shooting. Yeah. So if that's not enough for you, I don't know yeah, what you're doing. He's got the app, so he made sure to research that real well. <laughs> um, okay, guys, what's next? What, where should they go next? Uh... Avatar Mountains. Yes. The Avatar Mountains, the inspiration for James Cameron's movie, are actually here in China. Um, they're insane to see. They do. You can see the resemblance from what he was going for. They're not actually floating in the sky, <laughs> but but it's eerily similar. Yeah, it's yeah, it's the fog and the clouds that come rolling in that really make, it looks when they're flying through them, you can see, okay, I understand how he got that inspiration. Yeah, those are right here. Bullet train and a bus away from us. I mean, really, what, a couple hours, and you're in the Avatar Mountains, Zhang, Zhang Jiajie. I kind of butchered that, but that's the name, that's the name of the, uh, the uh, mountain range. That's just, uh, again, incredible. Yeah. Um, another one that you guys might not know is Huangguo Shu. That is a waterfall in a place called Guizhou, and it's the largest waterfall in Asia. It's over 100 meters tall. It's huge. It's gorgeous. 
Um, I highly recommend going to Guizhou. It's kind of in the south central part of China, um, that province. But it is gorgeous. It's so mountainy. Just going into their capital, Guiyang, you go over this huge canyon with uh, the river underneath it. Um, great food, and it's fantastic. So much culture um, in a place like that. But yeah, China has like, Asia's largest waterfall um, in kind of central China, which is amazing to check out. And then one, one more last place for us to touch on, which because uh, we relate to it a lot, is Hainan Island, which I'm sure not a lot of people know about, but it's quote unquote the Hawaii of China. Again, no Honolulu, but beautiful sand, beautiful water, scuba, surfing, uh, seafood, all that stuff you'd expect uh, from a tropical island. And China has its own, and I mean, people really don't even know that that landscape exists here. Yeah, it's like the Hawaii of China. A lot of people vacation there. It's really, really famous. Um, for Chinese people, and it is gorgeous to see. So definitely keep that on your mind if you're looking for something tropical and you do have a visa that you can use. Uh, finally, if you love history like we do, um, we like to travel in places that you get to see a lot of history. And one of those stories that you don't hear a lot about is the province Anhui, which is kind of central on the coastline of China, on the east coast. <clears throat> and China, uh, Anhui is famous for being super, super, super rich hundreds of years ago. The merchants from China, some of the famous, famous merchants that would trade salt, lumber, tea, all those stuff, they used to be, they, a lot of them were from Anhui. And so they used to live back in the day, they lived like kings. Yeah. They built palaces, they had palaces where they housed their wives, their concubines, and it was just amazing to see because these villages of Anhui were, you know, centered around these huge palaces, the rich, rich, rich of China. And so it's a super interesting story because you can go there now and some of those palaces that weren't torn down, you know, yeah. in the Mao Zedong era are still there. Anhui now is super, super poor, but some of those palaces are still there to go check out. Um, and, it's a, and it's an amazing thing to see. And so doing things like that in a place like China where you get to see the culture, yeah. the history, and less known, less traveled spots in like Xi'an and Beijing, they're just fantastic. So definitely if you have time, check out Anhui when you get here. I mean, you're tracing the oldest history in the world, oldest continuous history in the world. So it's very, very cool to be able to kind of put that together over time in your head, the, the grasping the history of it. I mean, it's like when you look at the U.S., a couple hundred years, and China's 5,000 plus, you know, so yeah. you can't even really wrap your head around it until you see it and you start looking at these things that were like, this was made, you know, a thousand plus years ago. It's like, whoa. Well, yeah, one other thing. I mean, I do really recommend people going to see the Terracotta Warriors yeah. in Xi'an. Uh, one of the coolest parts of going to Xi'an is the city wall yeah. that is built around what is now downtown Xi'an. Xi'an is in central China. But the cool story about that is that's the old capital. That's yeah. the first capital of China, and that wall was built, and it's still there. The one that's still there, I think, is only like 800 years old. Yeah. But... <laughs> It's, it was, you know, it's there, it's got like, you could kind of see where the old moat used to go around the city. It's just unbelievable to feel the history in a place like this and feel where China started, yeah. you know, so long ago. I mean, even the Great Wall speaks for itself, I'm not saying anything bad about it, but we do want to say China has so much to offer if you're coming here as a tourist, uh, you know, as a businessman, you have a few extra days, highly recommend getting outside your city and peeking around just, you know, a few hours outside your town. It will really blow your mind. Like, like he just said, definitely see the historical spots, but also put a little bit more effort into getting to one of the few spots that we recommended today because it's something that you're not going to see anywhere else. Yeah, we'll link to them here uh, at the bottom of the episode, mm -hmm. and then you can check out the wiki travel page on them, how we normally do some research, and you know, hopefully you enjoy your next trip out here. All right, guys, have a good week. It's Monday, so time to ramp it up. Yep, stay productive through the weekend. All right, guys, see ya. Bye.